At 60, she faked her own death now she's a Hollywood star. How did that happen? Buckle up, because this is one of the wildest stories you'll ever hear. It all began with a 60-year-old woman who decided to pull off a stunt so shocking, so outrageous, that it catapulted her from obscurity to international fame overnight. And trust me you won't believe how it happened. Her name is Margaret Ellis, and until recently, she was just a regular woman living in the sleepy town of Brampton, a place where excitement was as rare as a winning lottery ticket. Margaret lived a quiet life, spending her days knitting, tending to her garden, and scrolling through endless Netflix shows. Her life was, mundane, to put it lightly. But deep down, she had a burning desire for something more something thrilling. Margaret had always dreamed of being a Hollywood star. When she was younger, she auditioned for commercials, took a few acting classes, and even landed a couple of small roles in local theater productions. But life had a way of pulling her dreams further and further out of reach. Bills needed paying, her kids came first, and eventually, the acting bug was buried beneath the responsibilities of everyday life. By the time she hit 60, Margaret had all but given up on her dream of ever making it big. That is, until she decided to fake her own death. Yes, you heard that right. Margaret Sweet, soft-spoken Margaret concocted an insane plan to stage her own death, vanish without a trace, and then reappear as a completely different person. The plan was risky, ridiculous, and downright illegal but Margaret was desperate, and desperation can make people do the craziest things. It all started with an idea. One night, while watching a true crime documentary about a man who faked his death and disappeared for decades, something clicked in Margaret's mind. If that man could pull it off, why couldn't she? The more she thought about it, the more it made sense. She had no immediate family to tie her down anymore her kids were grown, her husband had passed years ago, and her friends, well, they were all too wrapped up in their own lives to really notice much about hers. Margaret figured she could disappear without much fuss, and then, after the dust settled, she could re-emerge in Hollywood as someone new. A fresh start. A new identity. It was the ultimate escape plan bold, reckless, but also ingenious in its own way. The plan took months to perfect. Margaret knew she couldn't just up and vanish without leaving some kind of story behind. So, she carefully crafted her death. First, she wrote out a heartfelt letter explaining how she felt trapped by the monotony of her life and was going away for good. Then, she staged a dramatic scene at the cliffs by the sea, leaving her shoes and a note behind for anyone to find. The note made it clear that she had taken her own life by jumping off the cliff, into the unforgiving waters below. The police launched a search when the note was discovered, but with no body to be found, Margaret was soon declared missing and presumed dead. To the world, Margaret Ellis was gone. But in reality, she was far from it. With a new name Evelyn Black and a dyed jet black bob, Margaret set off for Los Angeles, the city of dreams. She rented a small, shabby apartment under her new identity and spent her days auditioning for any role she could find. At first, the going was tough. Rejection after rejection wore her down, and she started to wonder if her insane stunt had been for nothing. But then came the break that changed everything. It was a small role in an indie film just a few lines, really but Margaret, now Evelyn, poured every ounce of herself into it. And wouldn't you know it, her performance caught the attention of the film's director, who was blown away by her raw talent. He cast her in a more prominent role in his next project, a quirky dark comedy that made waves at film festivals across the country. Suddenly, Evelyn Black was the name on everyone's lips. Her performance was hailed as a revelation, and soon enough, she was being courted by big-time Hollywood directors. Margaret now thriving under her new identity, had finally made it. She was living the life she had always dreamed of red carpets, glamorous parties, magazine covers, the whole shebang. She was a celebrity. 
but there was just one problem, her past wouldn't stay buried. As Margaret's star rose higher and higher, rumors started to swirl. Some people began to notice how much she resembled a woman who had gone missing a few years back Margaret Ellis, the woman who had supposedly taken her own life. At first, the resemblance was dismissed as pure coincidence. But then a former neighbor recognized her, and whispers of her true identity grew louder. The story quickly spiraled out of control, and soon the tabloids were plastered with headlines like, Hollywood's newest star is she really a woman who faked her death? Margaret tried to dodge the accusations, but the walls were closing in fast. As the media frenzy intensified, she found herself faced with an impossible choice, come clean and risk losing everything, or continue the charade and hope no one could ever prove the truth. The pressure was mounting, and Margaret knew that one slip-up could destroy her new life. But could she really keep up the lie forever? Would the truth finally catch up with her? Margaret now fully embracing her new identity as Evelyn Black was starting to feel the weight of her deception crushing her from the inside out. As the gossip about her supposed fake death spread, it became harder for her to enjoy the fame she had so desperately craved. At every public appearance, she could feel eyes scanning her face, trying to match her to the ghost of Margaret Ellis. Paranoia set in. Were her fans really adoring her performance, or were they secretly piecing together the puzzle of her past? But the real problem wasn't the fans it was the journalists. The Vultures. A notorious tabloid reporter named Jackson Reed had made it his mission to dig into her past, and he wasn't giving up any time soon. Jackson was relentless, sniffing out every tiny inconsistency in her story. He'd even tracked down Margaret's estranged daughter, Sarah, for an interview, hoping to expose Evelyn's secret once and for all. Sarah hadn't heard from her mother in years, and when asked about the rumors, she remained cagey. I haven't spoken to my mom since before she, disappeared, Sarah had said, her voice filled with a mix of anger and sadness. Jackson pressed harder, hinting that maybe her mother wasn't dead at all, but Sarah cut him off. I'm not interested in speculation, she snapped, before slamming the door in his face. Still, Jackson wasn't deterred. He knew he was onto something big. He began stalking Evelyn's every move, waiting for her to slip up, to make one mistake that would confirm his suspicions. For months, he followed her around like a shadow, showing up at events, pressing her with questions that made her heart race. But Evelyn was smarter than he gave her credit for. She'd been preparing for this moment ever since she had faked her death, and she wasn't about to let some nosy reporter destroy everything she'd built. She began using her newfound wealth to tighten her security, hiring a team of high-powered lawyers to keep Jackson at bay, and taking extra precautions to keep her past under wraps. Despite the pressure, Evelyn's career continued to soar. She was offered a lead role in a major blockbuster film, and her name was being thrown around as a contender for the Academy Awards. The more successful she became, the more determined she was to keep the truth buried. She had come too far to lose it all now. But the more she tried to outrun her past, the more it seemed to catch up with her. Then came the breaking point. One evening, at a glamorous Hollywood gala, Evelyn was caught off guard. She was halfway through sipping champagne and mingling with the glitterati when Jackson Reed cornered her with a microphone in hand, cameras rolling. He was live-streaming the encounter to his millions of followers. So, Evelyn or should I say Margaret Ellis care to explain how a woman who supposedly died five years ago is now standing here in front of me, he asked, his voice dripping with smug satisfaction. For a moment, everything froze. The crowd around them fell silent, eyes widening as Jackson's words sunk in. Evelyn felt the blood drain from her face. This was at the moment she had been dreading. The cameras zoomed in on her face, capturing every twitch, every sign of panic. But Evelyn wasn't about to let her empire collapse so easily. She took a deep breath and steadied herself. Then, with all the poise of a seasoned actress, she gave Jackson a dazzling smile. 
Margaret Ellis? I have no idea who that is, she said, her voice smooth as silk. But if you want to start spreading wild conspiracy theories, be my guest. Hollywood loves a good story, after all. The crowd chuckled nervously, but Jackson wasn't buying it. He pressed on, pulling out old photos of Margaret Ellis and comparing them to Evelyn's face. These photos don't lie, he snarled. You can't hide from the truth forever. Evelyn's smile wavered for a split second, but she quickly recovered. You know what, she said, stepping closer to Jackson, her eyes blazing with defiance. People love to dig up the past. They love to create scandals out of nothing. But the truth is, I've worked hard to get where I am, and I'm not going to let anyone, least of all a tabloid hack like you, tear me down. So go ahead, keep chasing your ghost. But I've got a career to focus on. With that, she turned on her heel and walked away, leaving Jackson fuming and the crowd buzzing with excitement. It was a risky move, but it worked. For now. However, the confrontation didn't go unnoticed by the press. The next morning, headlines were splashed across every major news outlet, Hollywood's Evelyn Black accused of faking her death is she really Margaret Ellis. The speculation reached a fever pitch, with talk show hosts debating whether or not Evelyn's story could be true. Some defended her, calling Jackson's claims ridiculous, while others were convinced that the similarities were too striking to ignore. Behind closed doors, Evelyn was spiraling. The pressure was becoming unbearable, and her once ironclad control over her emotions began to fray. She had built her life on a lie, and now that lie was starting to crumble. But Evelyn wasn't ready to give up. Not yet. She hired a PR team to help her manage the scandal, spinning the narrative to make Jackson look like a crazed conspiracy theorist out to ruin her. They crafted statements, held press conferences, and worked tirelessly to protect her image. And for a while, it seemed to work. The media frenzy began to die down, and Evelyn's career continued to thrive. She was even nominated for an Academy Award, solidifying her place as one of Hollywood's brightest stars. But the guilt weighed heavily on her. She had lied to the world, to her fans, to the people who had come to admire her. And worst of all, she had lied to her own children. Sarah still didn't know the truth, and the thought of her daughter finding out the real story filled Evelyn with dread. The night of the Academy Awards arrived, and Evelyn walked the red carpet in a stunning gown, the picture of elegance and confidence. But beneath the surface, she was unraveling. As she took her seat inside the theater, surrounded by the glittering elite of Hollywood, she couldn't shake the feeling that this was all a house of cards, ready to collapse at any moment. And then, the unthinkable happened. As Evelyn sat there, tension gripping her every nerve, the unthinkable happened, her name was called. She had won the Academy Award for Best Actress. The theater erupted into applause, cameras flashing from every direction as Evelyn made her way to the stage. This was at the pinnacle of her career, the moment she had fought so hard for, and yet it felt like she was standing on the edge of a precipice. She took the golden statue in her hands, the weight of it almost crushing under the burden of her secret. As she stood at the podium, looking out at the sea of famous faces staring back at her, the guilt became overwhelming. For a moment, she hesitated, unsure of whether she could continue the charade any longer. Her heart pounded in her chest, her mouth went dry, and she gripped the microphone for support. And then, in an instant, everything changed. A familiar voice echoed through the theater it was Sarah, her daughter, standing in the back of the room. Mom. She called out, her voice cutting through the applause like a knife. The room fell eerily silent. All eyes turned toward Sarah, who was frozen in place, her face a mix of shock and disbelief. For a moment, Evelyn was paralyzed. She could feel the world closing in around her. The secret she had fought so hard to protect was about to unravel in front of the entire world. She stared at Sarah, 
her daughter's eyes wide with confusion and pain. The cameras zoomed in, capturing every second of this unexpected confrontation. The press had a field day this was the headline of the century. Evelyn knew there was no escaping now. The walls had finally crumbled. Yes, Evelyn whispered into the microphone, her voice trembling. Yes, it's me, your mother. I'm Margaret Ellis. A collective gasp echoed through the audience. The entire theater sat in stunned silence, hanging on her every word. For a few agonizing seconds, it felt like time had stopped. Then, slowly, Evelyn began to speak again, her voice growing stronger as she poured her heart out. I never meant to hurt anyone, she continued, her eyes welling up with tears. I was lost. I was trapped in a life that felt suffocating, and I didn't know how to escape. So I did something desperate something reckless and foolish. I faked my own death because I wanted a second chance at life. I wanted to be someone else. And somehow, by a twist of fate, I ended up here on this stage, in front of all of you. The audience was rapt, their expressions a mix of shock, sympathy, and disbelief. Evelyn took a deep breath and continued, her words flowing more freely now. But the truth is, no matter how far I tried to run from my past, it caught up with me. I lied to everyone to my family, my friends, the people who believed in me. And for that, I am deeply sorry. The room remained silent, hanging on her every word. I never expected to end up here, and I certainly never expected to win this award, Evelyn said, glancing down at the golden statue in her hand. But I also never expected to live with so much guilt. I can't take back what I've done, and I know I've hurt the people who mattered most. But I want to be honest now. I want to stop living a lie. Tears streamed down her face as she looked out into the crowd. Her heart ached when she saw Sarah standing there, her expression one of heartbreak and confusion. Evelyn turned back to the microphone. To my daughter, Sarah I know I've hurt you in ways I can never undo. I don't expect you to forgive me right now, but I hope that one day we can talk, and maybe you'll understand why I did what I did. I love you more than anything, and I'm so sorry. The room was thick with emotion, as if everyone there was experiencing the weight of Evelyn's confession. For a moment, it seemed as though the entire world was watching, waiting to see what would happen next. Evelyn stepped down from the stage, feeling lighter than she had in years. The truth was out, and there was no going back now. But oddly enough, she felt a sense of relief. She had carried the burden of her secret for so long, and now that it was finally exposed, she could start to rebuild no more lies, no more running. As she walked toward Sarah, unsure of what her daughter would say, Sarah simply stood there, frozen in place. The world around them blurred, and all Evelyn could see was her daughter's face. There were tears in Sarah's eyes, but there was also something else something that looked a lot like understanding. Mom. Sarah whispered, her voice breaking as Evelyn approached. Evelyn reached out, her hands trembling. I'm so sorry, she said again, her voice full of emotion. I never wanted to hurt you. For a moment, it seemed as though Sarah might turn away, that the years of hurt and confusion were too much to overcome. But then, slowly, she stepped forward and embraced her mother. The crowd watched in awe as mother and daughter reunited on one of the most public stages in the world. Evelyn knew that the road ahead wouldn't be easy. The media frenzy would likely continue, and she would have to face the consequences of her actions. But for the first time in years, she felt like she could finally breathe. She had faced the truth, and now she could begin to move forward. The next few weeks were a whirlwind. News outlets everywhere covered Evelyn's story, speculating on what would happen next. Some condemned her for her deception, while others praised her for coming clean. Hollywood was divided some saw her as a fraud, while others admired her bravery. But none of that mattered to Evelyn anymore. What mattered was that she had taken control of her own story. And in the end, 
that was more powerful than any award Hollywood could offer. Evelyn's career didn't disappear after the confession, though it certainly shifted. She started taking on more personal roles, sharing her story of redemption and second chances. She began working with organizations focused on mental health, using her platform to encourage others who felt lost to seek help instead of taking drastic measures. It wasn't the fairy tale she had once dreamed of, but it was real. And for Evelyn, that was enough. As for her relationship with Sarah, it was a work in progress. Trust would take time to rebuild, but they were talking again, taking small steps toward healing the wounds of the past. And though Evelyn could never erase what she had done, she was committed to being honest and present from that point forward. In the end, Evelyn didn't just fake her death she faked her way into a new life. But it was only when she finally faced the truth that she truly began to live.